But let's talk about specific policies. For instance, right now, our South African constitution um, enshrines a woman's right over her body, whereas the ACDP would oppose abortion rights for women. Don't you think this is counterproductive? You know, the sad thing about South Africa is that they have adopted measures that have not been adopted by other countries. South Africa is acting like a guinea pig in a number of ways. As I was coming down here today, I was accompanied by a gentleman who told me that he studied in France and that the rights that you find there have limitations. In South Africa, many people believe that my right is to do whatever I want to regardless of the rights of other people. That is why the ACDP did not support our current constitution because we felt that there needed to be a balance between rights and responsibilities. When there are no responsibilities, you see people and you find people acting irresponsibly. While we believe that women must have the right over their bodies, we at the same time say that the, the person within them is a human being that also has rights. If they undermine the rights of the unborn, why should people be excited about their rights? Because everyone must respect the rights of other people and not selfishly promote their own rights. But when it comes to issues like gay rights or the gay right to marriage, um, you, you disagree in that regard. There is something called culture. There is something called religious beliefs. Now, if South Africans are true, and if the South African constitution is true about respecting the rights, cultural rights and religious rights, then they need to consider what the majority of people who believe in religious rights and cultural rights are saying. And what they are saying is, according to their religions, talk, talk about Islam, talk about uh, Hinduism, we talk about Christianity, talk about Judaism, all these religions teach uh, relationships between males and females. And you look at cultures also, it is the same thing. So you have a few individuals who would impose what they got somewhere overseas. And many of the countries that they are taking or gleaning this from, in their very constitutions, they do not have what we have in South Africa. That's why I'm saying South Africa is acting like a, a guinea pig. You talk about sexual orientation. Does the American constitution have sexual orientation? No, it does not. The UK constitution? No, they don't. Why South Africa? That's my question. Why South Africa? If it was so good and it was something to applaud, they should have been the first people to have it. The question is, why don't they have it in their constitutions? Are they just expecting South Africans to destroy themselves and destroy one another while they have rights with limitations that even their children are taught? I do not know. I mean, my children grew up in the U.S., okay? They grew up in the U.S., and I never heard of the, the parents with which we were interacting talking about their children having the right to do what South African children are doing. In the evenings, they are home, they are reprimanded, they are spanked even sometimes, and yet in South Africa, it is free for all, just do whatever you want. That's why many of our children are irresponsible. But we're not talking about children here. We're talking about the rights of two consenting men or women to live their lives in the way that they see fit. We are still saying, I'm still saying, let's talk about people who believe in religious rights and cultural rights. Unless if you tell me you don't believe in religious rights and cultural rights, then let's revisit the constitution and remove that. I'm saying, uh, who are we bluffing to talk about religious rights and cultural rights? And when people say, according to our culture and according to your religion, this is not on. And people are saying, ignore what your writer is saying. Forget about your cultures. Forget about your religion. That's where I differ and I disagree.